uh, oh, yes. Them to go yeah. to uh, absolutely. YouTube. Yeah, absolutely. Because yeah, we post it, we usually post a video on our um, on their uh, web page anyway. So yeah, we okay. want to use that. Yeah. So even if they don't follow us on YouTube, they if they go to our site page, like our website, they can see it. And also, it just helps uh, conversation if we can mm -hmm. see what you're talking about and things like that. Right. So. Right. Yeah. All right, here we go. Three, two, and one. All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of Persuasion by the Pint. Jonathan Taylor, along with Sean McCool. And we had a special guest uh, coming from uh, his quarantined headquarters in, <laughs> in uh, California. David. Los Angeles. Los Angeles. So we have David C. joining us. He is the uh, founder and CEO of Minibook. Um, and I've mentioned, Sean and I, David, we've, we've talked about uh, Minibook on some past episodes and uh, just some of the, um, you know, the platform that you have for people out there that want to kind of build or that are looking to build their own audience and how easy it is, you know, with this, uh, with this kind of this media, like, I mean, using a small miniature book to use to kind of grow your audience. Uh, I mean, it's perfect for people that are consultant speakers, um, people that are coaches. So we're going to get into that today because you've got some examples to share. I've got some mini books myself here on my desk that I'm going to share. And uh, so this is going to be very interesting because I think a lot of people out there who talk about wanting to write a book or author a book, it's very overwhelming. Uh, but when you, we start talking about something like this, you know, putting together a, a mini book to kind of get your message out there, it's a whole different ball game because you don't, you don't have to write a 300 page book. You just have to get your content out there to your people. And it's pretty easy to do with this format. So, uh, so yeah, we're going to be talking about that. So uh, before we do that, and before we get into the topic and introduce David, we're going to uh, get into our beverages. And um, I guess we like to, uh, we like to let our guests go first, David. So why don't you sh share with us what you're going to be having on this episode? Okay, so uh, I've been enjoying this La Croix uh, coconut <laughs> soda. Uh, there you and, go. Uh, fantastic it's got the best flavor of any coconut soda i've tried a bunch of them and it's uh -huh. just it's really good in fact i don't know you know i probably should try not to drink too many of them but they're they're quite good they have zero calories it's all taste yeah I like that yeah it's, My... it's not happy hour yet in california it's only two o'clock <laughs> yeah. So. yeah we need to make that known that's why you're you're having a uh, a sparkling water it's it's right. only two o'clock so yeah well, I mean, my wife's a big fan of LaCroix, I know, so uh, I've never developed a taste. I've, I've gone straight for the hard stuff myself. So I like to just buy the, I like to buy the sparkling water just without the flavoring. And then you can buy the, what I tend to do is buy, my wife buys a little flavoring uh, squirts that you can shoot in there because we got all these different flavors. Yeah. So you can kind of mix it up. So she, we just buy the sparkling water and I'll just put in whatever flavor I feel like doing that day. And uh, whatever I feel like, I'll go with either root beer or raspberry or whatever. So cool. But I haven't tried coconut yet. That sounds, that sounds, that sounds interesting. Sounds, sounds, sounds very, summery. sounds very summery. It is. It is yeah. refreshing. Cool. Jonathan, right. what do you, what are you having over there? <clears throat> All right. So I am bringing my um, Imperial stout. We were talking uh, before the show, David, uh, Sean and I like to visit our, um, one of our local uh, beverage distributors here, and it's a uh, total wine. Oh, looks like the Zoom is lagging. Jonathan, you froze. I'm good. Yeah, you're good. I see you. You see me, so that's good. Uh, I'll type him a chat, see if he sees it. It's been happening more with uh, Zoom's popularity for sure. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there you are. There we are. Right. You froze uh, for a while. Yeah, I see uh, the internet connection, it says, is a little unstable. Hopefully that clears up. It's but been drinking a, too. Uh, this is a Stone Woot uh, Stout. This is uh, from straight out of California. 
Um, let's see, give you a little background. It is a, uh, 11 and a half percent ABV. Ooh. Um, so it's pretty, uh, pretty strong. Imperial stout, uh, has been a favorite among fans since its inception in 2013, uh, pecans, pecans, or so they say wheat and flaked rye. Uh, so I don't know, it, this is something new. I, I, you know, how we usually dr- judge a beer, uh, Sean, we usually pick it by the, uh, the label. labeling. <laughs> and so this was a pretty cool. It looked like some kind of a Marvel character on the front. So I, yeah. I decided to pick it up. Yeah. Looks good. All right. While you're pouring that, I am going to uh, bring out the, so this was a different one. So kind of an old fashioned looking bottle, Lugine. This is a chocolate milk stout. So chocolate. Ooh. Yeah. So I, I brought a Hershey bar as well to go with it. If I, if right. it's not chocolatey enough, I've got a um, stout. And uh, so it looks like they have quite a bit of copy on the side of the bottle, but it's like, I literally, <laughs> it's too small to read. So I can't even right. read it. And it's not, it, like, it's the font's not good. It's a, it's one of those, like, you see that? Like it's, Oh yeah. Kind of the italicized font and, on the green background is just not working. So that's a marketing no, no right there. As far as not being able to read the font, um, that somebody spent a lot of time writing. So, um, yep. mm-hmm. can't even see the, it's hard. It's a very hard label to read other than the, just the look and feel of it. So can't give you much details on this one. Other ABV, than ABV, what is it? Uh, it looks like, uh, can't tell. Can't tell. Okay. At least not reading sideways. As long as it tastes good. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I'll pour it and see if I can turn the bottle a different direction and get the light. But uh, yeah, super dark, as I would expect for a chocolate stout. And this is from Odell Brewing. I know we've had some of those guys on before as well. Oh, yeah. All right. So So cheers. Cheers, gentlemen. (laughs) So David, what do you, uh, when happy hour does arrive, what do you tend to, um, what's your forte? Do you like a, a, a glass of wine, a beer or, or just you know, uh, well, another LaCroix? Uh, mostly, you know, I try to not, uh, not imbibe too much cause it's, uh, doesn't help me focus, but, um, I'll enjoy a, a whiskey once in a while, but probably gin is my favorite, just uh, gin and tonic or uh, just a, a martini if I have a dinner to go with it or cause for celebration. Cool. I've got a, uh, he froze again. It's that, uh, it's that East Tennessee internet connection. So. Oh, I'm, <laughs> I'm worried about mine here. Yeah, no, you're, you've been, you've been a little bit warbly, but you know, everything is a little, uh, little tight on on zoom right now it seems like especially it seems like fridays friday afternoons we may have to adjust our schedule but we'll edit this stuff out so it's fine um okay so yeah he'll come back he had to drop but um yeah we edit this stuff out when it happens no Ah, there we go we're back i mean you can't edit live on youtube but we can edit (laughs) we can edit the audio anyway that's that's it all right we're back so sorry about that. We uh, Zoom is kind of sketchy lately. So yeah, uh, or yeah, we'll be switching up next week. See what that does. So David, why don't you share a little bit about um, uh, your background? I know you're the uh, founder of Many Book. Can you sh- uh, give us a little background on your um, your uh, your past history before uh, I guess before Many Book and maybe what led up to the founding of Many Book. Well, I've been involved in marketing for a long time. Uh, That was my uh, undergraduate degree. Uh, Then I ended up working for Yellow Pages in Los Angeles, which, as you know, was really the first internet uh, for marketing Yellow Pages, and uh, did that for a few years, and then uh, moved to Arizona, uh, got a graduate degree in international marketing, and then decided to open a printing company, of all things, and that uh, went Uh, Well, uh, but uh, about uh, 2009, ran into, uh, well, okay, so the printing company is primarily a digital printing company. We did offset also, and we had uh, customers all around the country. Uh, 
Uh, right. We were one of the pioneers in digital printing. And then uh, in 2009, I ran into an old customer of mine that I used to do his software manuals. And uh, he said he wanted to do these small books. Uh, did we lose? Yeah, lose you can keep time? You can keep okay. going. Okay. So uh, uh, he wanted to do these small books and he uh, had written them, but he was looking for someone to print them. He said, well, David, can you do that? And uh, I said, yes, I can uh, print these small books for you and ended up uh, getting so excited about it that we actually found a name for them, got the name trademarked and uh, kind of developed uh, it into a full-blown uh, product suite. So we have different sizes, we have different bindings, uh, the books are mailable, uh, the smaller ones with a stamp, mm -hmm. uh, and they're uh, very cost-effective to give away. So they work for marketing, they work for sales, yeah. uh, they work if you want to sell them, uh, just a lot of different uses for I'm going to I'm holding up this is this is one that I published uh this was about 4 years ago and I had this one was uh because my my industry is in the manufacturing specifically composite manufacturing industry so this has been a real I mean I still get people that go to my website and request this little mini book um and then I've got actually turned it into a PDF as well but you hold that closer to this yeah. camera Cause it's, yeah. it's, it's little. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's a, it's a mini book. Um, yeah. but it's the, uh, the pocket marketing guide for today's composite manufacturers, how to use online content to grow your business in any economy. Um, which as you know, a lot of manufacturers are, are always lagging behind, you know, when it comes to marketing. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of the companies that I would work with, they would be like, you, you know, they would, you would start mentioning the stuff and, and talking to the stuff and it was like a foreign language. So I decided, you know, with the help of the publishers at Minibook to put one of these together to distribute out to a lot of my customers, my clients that I work with. And this was a winner. So, um, so and, for people listening who aren't watching on video, um, and Dan, you could answer this probably just as quickly by glancing at it. Like what's, what's the size of that? And what would you compare that to so people have a quick frame of reference? Like dimensions. Okay, so uh, that is our classic size. It's three and a half by five inches. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, we also have a slightly larger size, four and a quarter by six inches. Mm -hmm. And three and, and a half by five would be comparable to what? Like an index card, a little bit? Not quite yeah, that. Yeah. Right? An index okay. card is three by five, so it's about a half inch wider. It's almost like a passport. Basically. Okay. Passport yeah, passport. Size. Yeah, that's a great example. Passport okay. book. Right. And then here's the next larger size. And we actually have, we'll do some larger size. We'll do five by seven. See, I didn't even notice. You guys have the little bit bigger sizes. Yeah. That's cool. Well, that's, I like that. that. That's what our regular printing company does. Like, we'll do six by nine also. Mm -hmm. But... uh you know, the economics are good with these, but the key is that people are more likely to read them. So you really want to uh, stick with the smaller sizes. Sure. You, you've got to get the camel's nose in the tent, <laughs> right? You, you've got to get that first interest and you don't do that with a 300 page book. So it can become a segue into uh, a full size book. That's so a great, you, yeah. Yeah, that's a great point. I know, uh, so my background, I've done copywriting for the last 12 years with, you know, a lot of direct response companies. And one thing I've learned is that format can make a huge difference in results. Like when things went from, you know, traditional sales letters on eight and a half by 11 paper in a number 10 envelope, you know, up to, you know, a Magalog or some of these other formats, like it made a huge difference. Same thing online when it went from a static sales page to a video sales letter, huge bump in, <laughs> in uh, consumption and sales and everything else. So I think that's a great point that, you know, a short, quick book, like you can at least, like people are going to at least flip through that. Where if it's a 200 page book on my desk, I'm like, yeah, I need to get to that, but I'm not ready for that yet. Right. 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 And yeah. the key with these things is that it's short enough that people will read them and have two benefits. One is 
Because the thing is with marketing, most people don't need what you do right now, but they might need it in the next five to 10 years or a year or two years. So with the mini book, they'll keep it and they'll usually be able to find it to go back to it when they do need it. Or even more valuable is what uh, I term a secondary audience. In other words, once someone knows what this content is, they embed it in their head. And then if one of their friends needs what this does, they will then make that referral. And that's actually, well, I'm holding this up. This is Kara Saletto's book. And she started with nothing in 2015, giving away eight to 10,000 of these per year. She's still doing it. And she's built her uh, coaching and consulting business up to seven employees now. With wow. well, up until coronavirus, she had uh, uh, about 300 events per year with her mm -hmm. seven person company. So, uh, but what her key was that she gave people something of value and they wanted to keep it. Yeah. I was sitting on a Southwest Airlines flight uh, landing in Ontario about two years ago. I sat next to a UPS pilot going to work, and uh, Kara lives in Indiana near Kentucky where the UPS hub is. And I guess she does a lot of consulting for them. I got to talking with the pilot and she said, uh, you know, I have this small little purple book and I use it every day. I said, well, that's it. That's Kara's book. She said, this thing is amazing. I, I couldn't live without it. So uh, it's about giving people something of value that they will keep and know, and then you get the benefits down the road. So it's almost like Drew Marketing but it's a one-time project. You give it to them once, you mail it to them Absolutely. once. And it sticks, unlike having to become, say, a professional uh, email marketer, right. right? Where you have to become a slave to the keyboard and you know you have to do that every week or whatever frequency you elect. To and how many, how many pages is that? Just curious. So this one's 32. That's exactly uh, 32 pages, mine. So yeah, 30, yeah. yeah. And this Which, is one with a business card attached yeah. to the back. And so that's what she does. Is this is her business card. Yep. I use mine too. I did the, the and so that's an option with mini book because I did the, the uh, business card too. You can choose to have like a tearaway card on there. So, so David, for, for people listening, so 32 pages, it's a small book, you know, about the size of a passport. Um, I hear 32 pages that kind of mentally, like I'm like okay, that's still a lot to write. How yeah, many? No, pages, you can, How many pages would that actually be like on a Word doc or something like that? Okay, so if it's straight text, you know, like straight text, uh, that could be anywhere from 110 to uh, 160 words per page. So okay. we'll tell people a 32 page. If you have a title page, it's some front matter and back matter. You know, it's anywhere from. Uh, 2,800 to 3,800 words. Okay. But we'll also do 16 pages, 24 pages, 12 pages, eight pages. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, um, you know, and if you, if you're a author or a coach consultant or anything like that, I mean, there's people that can, that's a lot easier to hire a ghostwriter for than it is to hire for a 300 page book. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. No, uh, Nowhere so near Stan here. Phelps is another guy that uses this a lot and he has the whole series of full-size books and he has a mini book for each of these different colors of goldfish mm -hmm. so he speaks a lot he's very active he lives in north carolina uh, and he hands these out and these become really just like a lead magnet for him and his business card says uh, i spoke to stan about to remind them of uh, what they talked to Stan about. And then it's got his business card and then a, a little uh, enter to win drawing thing that ah, people can drop in with their email cool. address cool. when they hear him speak. And these have worked incredibly well for him. Yeah, that's really cool. And, you know, I'm just thinking of different ways you could get that produced. You know, if you've ever given a um, 20, 30 minute keynote talk, if you've, um, you could get that transcribed mm -hmm. super quick and then clean it up and you've got yourself a book. Yep. Yeah. I, mean, I would, I would think one of those books is probably a 30 to 40 minute talk. Would that probably be similar? Yeah. Yeah. 
probably, but yeah, you know, you're going to edit a talk down, right? right. Mm -hmm. When you talk, it's going to be more words than you would write. So yeah. uh, I, I would say that's about right. Another application I was thinking about is if you've already written a full size book and then you get interviewed by someone, say a podcaster, uh, mm -hmm. the podcaster is going to ask you good questions about your book and get to the meat of it. Then sure. you take that podcast and turn it into one of these as the author and yep. then hand it out to people. So you're not handing out books. You're handing out basically hyperlinks or book uh, bookmarks that right. book to get them mm -hmm. to uh, be interested in reading the book. Yep. Yeah, that's a great idea. And you could also, so you've given us a couple of examples. You, you taught us about a coach, a speaker, like what are some other ways, Jonathan, you've told us about using these as a manufacturer, like to mm -hmm. get in in front of manufacturers to kind of pre-sell them on some of the stuff you do. Um, what are some other ways, David, you've seen people use these um, as lead okay, generation well, or whatever else? Well, okay. So uh, lead generation, uh, here's a good one. East Maryland Pet Hospital. So they, we have envelopes. You can get them with an envelope. You can print on the back side. It's got a flat back side, so you can print on either side. And I've been surprised. They've come back and reprinted this mini book uh, probably, uh, gosh, six or seven times now. And they just do a short run. They do like a yearly mailing, but it's a very high ROI for them uh, because it's for dental cleaning and they bill those out at about four or $500. And so clearly it pays for them to do this. It's got a picture of all their veterinarians in the back and they've got their business card. And That's cool. Then inside it goes into, you know, what they do with the dog's teeth. And, you know, it's, it's pretty graphic, all that, all that stuff, but it worked very well for them. So that's one thing with the envelope. So, for me. So that's cool. I, so I got the envelopes too, when I ordered mine. And that's, that's another cool feature is you can slide your mini book, you know, you can slide it into these little personal envelopes right there and send it out. What the thing I didn't know is that you could have your own custom printing done on the outside of the envelope. That's pretty right. cool. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. So you can, you can put a message on there and Sean and I, we, we talk a lot about from our, uh, from, you know, a copywriting standpoint, sending out direct mail you know, sometimes the envelope is the most important piece because it gets you to open up the, uh, you know, open up what's inside. So it's a very unique envelope, but we also have them in black. Now, mm -hmm. taking that concept a step further for uh, B2B marketing, especially in our coronavirus time when you don't get as much face time. Yeah. Uh, so here's a guy that had a package for sports marketing. Okay. And he did his mini book right here mm. with his business card on the inside Yep. and he did a note card okay, okay. so the note card is a postcard size four and a quarter by six and uh, i've i call this no excuses follow-up marketing no <laughs> that's great sales follow-up marketing because you get off the phone with someone you write a quick note you can't fit more than two sentences in there but if you're really windy you could you know, right on the back, but you, you write the note. Thanks, Mr. Jones. Great to talk to you. You enclose this book and then you address the envelope and you make a copy of it on your copier because everybody has a home copier. Sure. They're working sure. out at home. You put it in the envelope or you put it down on the copier glass. You know who you sent it to and what you said, mm -hmm. but you've sent them the book and it gives you an excuse to follow up with yeah. them when they've gotten the book, which would be a week or two weeks, it's just a, a, a way to touch base, mm -hmm. but it's a much higher touch process than an email, which rolls off the screen, usually for most people after a day. Yeah, and of right. course, highlight this article that came out, you know, the return of pen and paper. It's mm. coming back. Yes. So uh, it's, just, it's a way to stand out from the crowd uh, and, be able to follow up with people if even if you're not a prolific writer it's a very personal touch yeah yeah you know what's cool is you could also um you know you could you could take a picture of that when you're ready to send it on take a picture with your phone and attach it to a a, a tickler on your calendar like with mm -hmm. the you know, attach the picture right on your yeah 
Google Calendar or whatever. Or, or, um, or when you take a picture with your phone, it makes me think you could actually take a picture of the book, mm -hmm. email that to the person you're mailing it to, so they've got this anticipation that they're going to get this book in the mail. Yep. There you go. <laughs> right. Yeah, get that get that uh, multi layered approach that you know multi channel right. approach. Hey, just drop this in the mail. To, I mean, you could take a picture of you like you know at the house, and then another one at the post office, and right. then, like <laughs> you know, just like it, it, I mean, you the could make it fun. It, right? Yeah, yeah, you can make it a lot of fun, and uh, you know, that's that would be great for realtors. For mm -hmm. um, well, I've actually got one from a realtor here. This realtor's in go. Canada. She didn't do the note card. What she does is she meets with people over coffee and buys them a coffee and then gives them a book. And, and uh, she's actually up in Canada. She had this professionally designed. Uh, wow. What's the name? Really What's the title? I like, I, I like, I'm always interested in the titles. Real estate playbook. Oh, okay. Hmm. Yeah. With a cup of coffee. All right. Yeah, which would remind remind then, you of the meeting. Yep. She did a custom envelope. You could see mm -hmm. that. Yep. With the thing on the back. So this was all professionally designed. Very that's cool. really cool. I love that. I I've I've been like that's totally excited me because I've been I've got two ideas for new mini books and the fact that you've got envelopes that you can you can print out like your custom message or something like that to kind of create a, an extra lead magnet there on the, Here's another uh, quick on the cover. Example. Uh, this guy is uh, an executive of a company that produces films for educational institutions, uh, among other things. And he sends this out to his list. Mm -hmm. He made a form letter, a form uh, postcard. Yeah. And then he designed this himself with his with his business card and it's just the uh, seven tribal laws for building trust mm. so just you know gives people something they'll keep and refer to and then they'll have his name when they're right. ready to talk to him but there are all mean, kinds of like this. sean you so, remember david right david dutton here's yeah. one from his yeah. replace your mortgage business they did right. and they were running this before they they uh, published their full size book which this got him a ton of leads right here this this little book right here replace your mortgage the proven six step uh method for paying off your home in five to seven years so yeah cool but uh but yeah this is so sean was bringing up um he mentioned he had a question earlier which i wanted to bring to your attention so somebody that's considering a uh, creating a mini book what are they in terms of um how many copies? I mean, kind of walk us through the process, like, cause this is a little different than uh, print on demand with like, if you're publishing through create space or something like, like this on Amazon, um, walk us through like what the process would be from somebody that's wanting to take whatever manuscript, whether it's a blog or a, a transcription or whatever, and have it, you know, converted over to a mini book. What do they need to do? Okay. So, um, I actually kind of have an outline of that process here. And I don't know if you have a place for downloads. I could. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We can put it on our webpage. Available to you so people could download it. And, mm -hmm. and actually uh, project strategy is the fourth bullet down here. So it's actually further down on the list in my world, the, the right. way I see it. <clears throat> uh, you need to have your business strategy first, the why, right. audience strategy, who, your distribution strategy, how are you going to distribute them? And then you start your project, which is the what. Okay. Uh, so as far as the content goes, uh, I say it's really important to outline mm -hmm. your content first. Uh, stay simple and on point, and you can tell stories and illustrate. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of keen on uh, using professionals to help you. Uh, sorry. Oh, it's okay. Uh, professional all editors, <laughs> uh, professional designers mm -hmm. for your cover. We have templates that we make available. You know, once you start a project, you get the right template for mm -hmm. your, uh, whether it's stitched or perfect bound uh, or with the business card, we provide all that. Uh, or you can use our standard covers. Uh, and I actually do have an example of someone who use our standard cover. 
he's a psychiatrist and he's come up with these this whole series of books on different aspects of mm -hmm. you know, counseling. Uh, and they're all stitched and they go in this little box here, slipcase and fit. Uh, but uh, it's best really to, to have someone who's good at design, yeah. design something yeah. custom to your branding and imaging. I think that's the most uh, important thing because a lot of people think, oh, I'll just get any old cover, but the main book is strategic. You really right. want to be strategic with it. Uh, it's almost, I say it's almost not worth doing if you're not going to be sure. strategic. I mean, there's some people that, you know, they want a book just so they can have a book, but it doesn't do you any good if it's sitting on the shelf. It's yeah, got to right. be a benefit to someone. So yes, it's a project, but unlike committing to say, email marketing, uh, you do it once and it's done. And if it's good, then you feel proud to give it away. Yeah. And you want to have kind of a timeless message as well. Like it's not just this week's message because obviously sure. you commit to print, you want them to be more uh, perennial messages. Right. So uh, that's, does that, does that answer your question? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm curious that, that uh, the slip case. Um, yeah. How many books fits in that? And like, how big is each book? Like that, I could, uh, I, my, my copywriter brain is like on overdrive right now, thinking yeah. about ways to so, use that. So <laughs> the thing is, I don't have a sample. I could post it. Uh, I had a gal that wanted to do four. The thing is that doing four stitched ones is going to cost more than one bigger perfect bound one, simply right. because right. you've got four covers and four right. bindings. Right right? It's, it's the same amount of printing, but you have that extra cost of the covers and the binding. So, yeah. but if you can justify it, uh, so these are all different lengths. I think there's one that's 24, a couple 32s, and then maybe mm. 40. Yeah. Okay. And then they, so you got four of them that fit into the, the slip case. There's actually five here. Okay. And the other thing is, if you're going to be selling them, you really need them to be shrink wrapped because otherwise yeah. they fall That's out. Awesome. Man, I love that. That is we, so cool. We, uh, so, I, so, how many perfect bound? Would that be like three perfect bound? Uh, actually, you can get. So, here's an example of a series that is shrink wrapped. Okay. Uh, and it's got five 64 page books. So if they're thicker, wow. you yeah. get fewer of them. Yeah. And What's cool is you can get the title on the spine too with the 64 page. Right. Right. A lot of people can't do that. It's hard yeah. to do. Believe me, yeah. it's hard to do. Well, also, I've been, these other plastic cases. I've been thinking for a while about uh, a project that I want to do. And I want to do it as instead of one long book, I wanted to do like a trilogy. Mm -hmm. Um yeah. And that would be a great way to to do that. Would be to kind of create a mini trilogy around my idea. So, uh, but I could think of a lot of ways, like you know, different steps and different processes that you could, you know, you could break out and have a little slipcase for. Um, that that's really cool. I know it. It's a different application, obviously, than just being able to throw it in the mail and things like that because of the the ease of postage on the on the traditional mini book. But that's a really great like. It's got a little more thud factor to it. Like if you oh, were yeah. to send it to somebody, right. um, you know, they can put it on their shelf or they can keep it on their yeah. desk or things like that. That could be, uh, you can get real creative with that. That would be fun. Yeah. 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 So speaking of thud factor, so I have one guy, he's done three books now. Uh, his first one was the classic size three and a half by oh, five. Like Secret. Next two were the uh, four and a quarter by six. He did a lot of direct mail with these. They've been very successful for him. Those are nice looking covers too. I like the black with the uh, gold. Yeah. gold uh, what? That's kind of in the spirit of some classic direct mail from mm -hmm. uh, yeah. like when I worked at Agora, you know, we, they had the, the little black book of secrets and the plague mm -hmm. of black debt. And they would do these, these short, like they look like, you know, beach, novel type little short beach novel sized books so more like the probably more like the five by sevens they would yeah, send those out in the mail he, he uh consults with dan kennedy and bob Bly, if you know those guys oh yeah, yeah. that's cool that's very cool 
Yeah. So there's a lot of, a lot of creativity that you could do with these things. What's the most uh, creative or unusual way you've seen your mini books used? Oh gosh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, uh, here's, okay. Here's a, another example. Well, okay. So this is probably one of the most unusual. Uh, it started out smaller. This is the great international beer festival. But they actually change it to Great International Perfect. Beverage Festival. It's Elite Brewing in Denver, Colorado. And so they have, or had, I don't know if they're still going to do it. It's an annual uh, tasting oh, where wow. all oh, the wow. restaurant tours from the town, you know, the area, uh, come in and they get this book along with a golf pencil. And they can <laughs> walk through the whole, you know, thing, sampling all the wine. And then they make a note of which ones they liked, and then they can go back and decide what to buy. You know, they walk through with their team to decide to taste uh, all that's the coins. Cool. Yeah, I like that. So they've got, you know, they've got a map on the inside. So this is our larger size, turned sideways, you know, horizontal application and stitched. Yeah. I mean, I that's like cool. That. If, if trade shows ever happen again, like that would be a cool <laughs> way for trade show companies yeah. or, mm -hmm. you know, anybody that has vendors at a, at a show to, to kind of add some vendor value, um, you know, at a conference or anything like that. So that, yeah, that's, that's cool. What else, we, we what else you got one, there? Well, I don't have a sample of, we have one guy uh, actually here in LA <laughs> that sells uh, industrial rubber flooring for manufacturing applications. Mm -hmm. And he's been doing his mini book for years now, like probably eight years. Uh, he prints about 3000 of them at a time. And when he goes to the trade shows the night before, he, we drill a little hole in the corner of the mini book and uh, he ties a sample of his rubber flooring to the book. And then he just hands them out to everyone walking by Mm -hmm. And in that process, he actually ended up selling Amazon worldwide uh, on his uh, rubber oh, floor. Wow. That's so, a pretty good account. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, he I made a lot more than I did, but yeah, uh, <laughs> I was going to say that's that's a that's a nice return on investment right there. Yeah. Yeah. So, but he was fanatic. He had a fanatic designer that did an incredible job, and he spent a good chunk of change on that. Uh, sure. but it paid off like a slot machine for him. Yeah, yeah. And you could never do that in an email. Like that would just, no. you're not going to send a sample. You're not going to, no. you know, all that stuff. So that's, you know, um, I know uh, I'm working with a company right now and they're super digital, right? They're just all in the digital world. And I bring up some old school tactics and they're like, uh, you know, we're online. And I'm like, yeah, but if you couple those two, <laughs> like yes. it's a whole new world. Yeah. Yeah. So here's one Darby Consulting there in Texas. Oh, I love that uh, cover. I like the and, red. Uh, it's it's actually kind of an orange when you get up close, but it's all color, oh. and they do uh, data consulting. So they're basically you know day modeling. Uh, oh heck yeah! It's, it's basically their marketing brochure. It's right. all color, uh, and they they're nationwide. They do a lot of federal work. Uh, yeah, it's IT consulting. Mm -hmm. So that's their tagline. Yeah. And uh, it, it's, you know, they've reordered a few times. I mean, so, you know, I could see people, you know, I know a lot of our users are online and do that kind of, or, or a lot of our listeners are online. Like for instance, let's say you were launching a course or a coaching program or a 30 day challenge. Like, it'd be really cool to take these mini books. And as soon as they sign up, you know, boom, you send out a mini book that has the syllabus of the course they're going to go through or the coaching program they're going to go through in a tangible form. So it's not just on some membership site somewhere, you know, it's on their desk and they remember, because you know, the hardest thing about a lot of these courses is getting people to consume them. Mm -hmm. Right. And then if they don't consume them, you don't get the testimonials. You don't get the referrals. You don't right. get any of that stuff. And the people don't get the change. But if it shows up in their mailbox and they've got a syllabus and it's a constant reminder, yeah, that's the thing about digital. Like if you don't open the website, you don't remember it's there. Out of sight, out of mind. So here's a good example of that. This is Accenture, their government division. Uh, they have a three-day course on agile fundamentals 
Uh, so it obviously costs them a lot of money to send people through this program. It's worldwide. They have it over in Asia and mm -hmm. Europe. And <clears throat> so what this mini book is basically just a summary of everything they covered in that course, a, a cheat sheet, mm -hmm. if you will. And so they give yeah. this to their graduates, all of their graduates. Can you see that? Yeah. Uh, there we can. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so all of That's their graduates get that uh, mini book and uh, they order it worldwide. I mean, that's great. If you've got like a service or you, you're teaching someone to do something, if you were to take that, you know, the key points, the key lessons, put it in a mini book, they can now carry it in their briefcase, in their laptop bag, and they can refer to it without having to log on or without having, let's say you're teaching I'm just gonna throw, like, even if you were teaching something like, um, I mean, HTML code or like even something that's super techie, like you may want, sometimes it's just nice to have a piece of paper next to you that you don't have to have an extra window open or an extra tab open that or you can just refer to or remember the password for. Yeah, There's exactly. No password to a book, right? <laughs> so, so these are both workbooks. Mm-hmm. So what they do is uh, kind of real time, they engage people. And this one was, uh, they're both professionally fine. So it's got, you know, content and places to write. Uh, so the people will keep them because they're personalized to their experience and what they covered in that uh, yeah. meeting, right? And here's another one. Uh, she gave me a very powerful uh, testimonial. I, I guess I don't remember it exactly, but basically she was able to use this at a moment's notice with a group of executives when she was handed this uh, consulting uh, uh, challenge at, at a moment's notice and was able to just produce some amazing things with people getting these executives, getting them to put their thoughts down on paper. And she was actually the first healthcare worker that contracted AIDS. Oh, wow. uh, she caught it through oh. a needle stick in Houston. Mm -hmm. So she has a big story to tell. That's, I mean, yeah, that's amazing. The range of things. So uh, David, tell us a little bit. I mean, you told us a little bit about like the prep process, but let's say I come up with an idea this weekend. I mean, you know, I hear this podcast, I'm excited about it. And I come up with an idea. What's the typical turnaround for something like this? Is, I mean, is it a, you know, cause a book can take six months or a year. I mean, what's the turnaround to, to get something like this done? Well, if, if you use one of our standard covers, okay. And they're on the website, you can see them. Uh, we can kind of semi customize them. They're free. If you take them exactly as they are, we just charge $50 to do a back cause there are no standard backs. Uh, or uh, we can start customizing colors and you know graphics and typefaces for a nominal charge. Uh, we will do the insides for people, uh, which are you know usually just straight text. Uh, on the website, there is a guide using Microsoft Word to approximate your layout. But those layouts, unless you're really good at Word, uh, generally <laughs> don't end up looking very good like a book okay uh, so we'll do the books in uh indesign okay and uh, that belongs to the uh, customer after you know we're done that sure. becomes their property uh but uh, that cost will range for a really <laughs> easy short one maybe like 150 125 depending upon we, we have to look at it to see what they were thinking Mm -hmm. uh, and what they want to get out of it, what kind of condition it comes to us in, but uh, maybe, you know, 250. Uh, although this guy's a doctor and he gives away thousands of these to his patients. And this, this was a pretty big formatting job and it needed to be edited. And, uh, he has an index. Whoa, so is that a, that's got a uh, comb, comb spot? It's a, it's a plastic coil binding on the short edge. So it's pretty dense and it's like uh, 160 pages. Uh, oh, that's nice. I like that. Medical, yeah. medical guide. So this, this cost a lot more to lay out. I mean, this was sure. up to over a thousand dollars. So we don't market ourselves as being professional designers, but we have a good yeah. 
handle on the technical side of it and, uh, you know, can <clears throat> produce a good interior that's cool. Well, yeah, I so remember, once... I, I was going to say when I remember when I did my uh, mini book and did and did some for a couple of clients, what I did was I had, <clears throat> I hired a layout person that helped me given the, um, you know, the, the specifics on the size, and then I would submit that. But the guy, I, I just remember the uh, the team at Minibook, they would help me along. So if the uh, dimensions weren't quite right or the bleed was a little too far over, uh, you know, they would reply back really quick and just kind of help me along the way and say, you know, you just need to tweak this a little bit to get it within the, you know, where it needs to be. And uh, so it was, it was a pretty easy process. Um, yeah, and we've, we've got all templates. So mm -hmm. if you've got a designer will give them the templates to use. Yeah. Uh, the only thing is some designers don't really understand, you know, how small it is. And so they have trouble with that. So you yeah. Just, you know, someone who's used to doing books is probably better than a, a, a regular designer that sure. does a lot of right. stuff. So but once you, you have the design nailed, you know, kind of form, you know, finalized, um, then how long does it take to get printed and, and then out to the customer? Like, okay, so, so if you're doing standard cover and give us a Microsoft Word file for the inside text, typically depending upon how, you know, if it's in good shape, if it's already edited and clean and we just have to format it uh, seven to 10 days, maybe two weeks if there's a fair amount of back and nice. forth prep. Mm -hmm. And then the manufacturing process, uh, once it's approved, is 10, 12 working days, and okay. then plus shipping. And so when you figure that out, just a little over three weeks to most parts of the country. But during these times, I say add three to five days to the yeah, right. Okay, so that's right. Yeah, so if you color, just I don't know if I mentioned that. You can mm -hmm. color this as a, a marketing piece for a, a orthodontist the guy that does really high-end orthodontics that's a great business because i mean you're getting traffic in all the time you can hand those out well the roi and, is, is huge if you get one customer mm -hmm. pretty much pays for your marketing for the whole year absolutely yes yeah, so, ten thousand dollars so so what does what's what's an idea of your minimum run and an, an average price? Uh, I know yeah, there's variables. So the, the pricing is actually on the website. Uh, okay. Minimum for perfect bound books is 250. The stitched ones uh, will do 250, but on the website it says 500 because there's really not much of a savings to doing 250. There's a lot okay. more setup. But the big thing to think about is if, you're giving the books away and you want to use them as the lead magnet. The stitched ones are a lot more affordable and justifiable okay. to give away. You don't have the thud factor, but if it's more important to you to get the lead and put your idea in that person's head, then you want to go with these like uh, Kara Saletto. She buys about two to 3,000 at a time. And I think at 3,000, she's down to about 67 cents each, including the business card. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. So you can afford to give that to a lot of people. Uh, it's, you know, Darby Consulting only to uh, get one customer, probably pays their whole marketing budget for the year. Yeah. That's kind of a different ball game, right? So you can afford to do them in all color <laughs> and give yeah, them away. Right. She's not giving away thousands of these where she gives away thousands of yeah. these. Well, well, I mean, I even think, you know, one of the popular models online right now is the free plus shipping offer for a book, right? So if yeah. you even said, hey, get a free mini book, um, I don't know if they can say, I guess that's a trademarked term. So I'm not sure how we, how we say that. But anyway, a free book. A we'll free just say book. it's a free mini book book. Okay. It's, so the mini book is the circled R. Uh, okay. Trademark, but, uh, yeah. I could actually, you know, I could offset the cost of the book anyway, you know, for 99 cents. And that's still going to attract a lot of people compared to the, you know, the 995 free plus shipping offers or the 795 free plus shipping offers. Yeah. Um, and at least offset. So um, do you. So and I'm asking this, know, go ahead. 
So just the technical side of mailing. Yeah. 30 page uh, with a postcard are under an ounce. Okay, and those work perfectly. Uh, when you get into the perfect sound books, <clears throat> under 88 pages with a postcard, they're still under an ounce, but these are considered non-machinable because they've got a stiff spine. So you're supposed to pay an extra 20 cents postage. Okay. Uh, so under an ounce for those people that aren't familiar with postage, that just means you can use a regular first class stamp, right? Uh, yeah, but, um, you know, it's been so long since I've looked into it, honestly. Uh, I haven't been pushing the mailing. I do do have about 100,000 envelopes in my warehouse. So, uh, uh, it's, uh, I want to say these are, uh, these are two ounces. Sorry. It's okay. the 32 page that's one ounce. Yeah. And these right. are two ounces. Okay. So mm -hmm. these are going to run about 80 cents. The envelopes are about 10. And then, of course, you have to stuff them. Right. Mm -hmm. So the only other thing about the perfect bound books is if they go in the regular mail stream, as opposed to the, the flat rate, which is a slower workflow, mm -hmm. uh, these envelopes travel at 30,000 pieces an hour through the machines and they go around a three inch roller. So what will happen is you will tend with the perfect bound ones to see a little wrinkling on the spine. We use flexible glue so it doesn't break but the envelopes get very roughly handled. So okay. it's just, I have a lot of people do it. They've mailed out thousands, mm -hmm. but uh, you just have to be aware of that. If you want it to come through pristine, you would need to put it in a bigger envelope at a higher postage rate, like a bubble envelope, sure. six by nine or five by seven. Okay. Um, so do you guys do any fulfillment or you just do the printing and ship it to the... For a big project, we'll, we have a mailing house we work with, okay. uh, but it's not really, it hasn't paid for us to get involved in that. Uh, we're, you know, happy to, well, okay, so we ship the books in a, like a sleeve, a tray. Jonathan, you're familiar with that. It's oh, like yeah. a coordinated tray. It's very nice, easy to yeah, travel. Yeah, I'm going to show you. Um, so we, we can, well... Yeah, so usually there isn't too much we do. We just pack them and ship them. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. So Jonathan's going to, if you're on the there YouTubes you or on the website, uh, you there's can a box. see this. All right, there we go. Yeah. Yep. A little box of uh, books. Just slide it out. And get so all your books right there. So it's very similar to what you might get a box of business cards in, just mm -hmm. bigger. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and and you and they send you if you decide to order the envelopes because that's another uh, that's a separate option. If you want the envelopes, you order those separate, and they come in a separate box as well, which I do. And uh, again, you get the envelope, and you know this next go around. I love the fact that you can customize the print. So that's uh, is that a little extra to have a printed envelope as a as opposed to just a blank envelope? Yeah, that's actually a whole set production process. Uh, okay. Those are printed offset uh, and uh, ship about the same time if you order it at the same sure. time. Uh, you know, we need the artwork uh, and that's printed. They can be printed for color. Mm -hmm. uh, mostly, though, they're printed uh, one or color, which is a traditional offset process. You can do four color inkjet, but, uh, you know, it's it can be a little more pricey. So for the stitch, it the so there there's 500 in a box. This is a it depends uh, on your page count. Yeah, right. it depends on your page count. But on this one, so I'm showing right here. I've got a. This is one of the boxes of the uh, the little composite book, and there's 500 to a box. Um, so it de it depends. Like the um, if it's say 16 pages, I'm not sure we get 500 of mm -hmm. any stitch one in that size. You're pretty thinking of your order, which yeah. is in a brown box that might have three of those in it. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, it I says understand. 500 on the box, but there's more. Right. There's not the 500 in that box. 500 total. 500. So, but we'll break it down so it'll tell you how many are actually. Sure. Okay. What's the so is 500 the minimum that you can order if you're ordering uh, regardless of stitch or regular regular bound books? No, 250. 250. 250. Is, okay. Is, uh, Okay, cool. 
the stitch yeah. ones, you're not going to really save much money. I was going to show real quick. I was going to show this one. This is a friend of mine and she did a uh, mini book. I encouraged her to do it. She's, she has a network marketing business and uh, she, she hands these out like in her own network marketing business. Um, I think the company's called unique, but what she did, she did something really unique, which actually that's the name of the company is unique. Um, but she told her story which I think people love stuff like this, which is she was a single mom, you know, and she kind of told her story about having to go through kind of a difficult marriage and divorce and, and um, you know, the fact that, you know, why she started her own company or her own business in network marketing and, and basically educated people. But she started with a story of her background. And I think that's interesting because people love, you know, we talk about on this show, people love stories people are attracted to personal stories and this is a great platform. You know, she used the, you know, not the stitch, but just the regular binding. So she was able to print, you know, this was like a, a like you said, a 64 page count. And she told, a, a, you know, from start to finish her story of what, you know, where she was in the beginning to what led her to starting her own business. And, you know, her subtitle of the book was empowering women to build a life they love. You know, so that was her theme throughout this. And that was the story that was her theme in the story is, you know, empowering other women who want to be entrepreneurs. So I just thought it was a great example. Yeah. Yeah. That is a great example. So I don't, I don't know if I showed you this one. It's landscape. Oh, cool. And it's apps. got edge, book tabs, of apps. edge tabs on it. And the interesting thing about this is it looks like there's a lot of color in it but it's really mm -hmm. just the divider pages. And so she's only paying for like 20 color pages and then the rest are black and white. Okay. Pages. So it's very cost effective to add a lot of punch to a book when you And those that. look very, I mean, the color pages on that look like glossy. I mean, is that typically when you, when you have color dividers like that, or they. It, well, it's, it's just it's so much coverage that it's kind yeah. of shiny. Yes. I like and that. We, we use a really high grade of paper. Mm -hmm. It's a digital printing, but with that much color, it's going to shine because yeah. the paper is very smooth. And and what does that person do? I'm just curious. Uh, uh, she's a speaker. Uh, she's also goes by Nerdy Best Friend. Mm -hmm. She's got a whole series. This is the little book of apps. And then she's got the big book of apps. And she's got the littlest book of apps. So she's got this whole thing and she sells these. Uh, when she goes to speak that's great what's the yeah. best I'm, I'm curious like for speakers because i've heard like examples where speakers like they do workshops and um so i know a lot of these speakers who use these mini books in their platform what they'll do is they'll order a bunch of books obviously and they will depending on the audience factor you know how many people are in their audience or how many people are in their workshop they'll have like a mini book like at their table or at their place, you know, if yeah. they're doing a, a live speaking engagement, is that, is, is that typically the way these are used as kind of free giveaways when they're. So uh, it kind of stratifies. So it's hard to sell them at the back of the room because yeah. you don't have enough time. You don't get right. enough money for them to mm -hmm. justify it. You, know, you, you could get crushed at the end for 15 minutes and everybody's gone. So what, right. how much did you make? You know, $300. Yeah. It's not worth it. So uh, this guy, uh, Bill Stainton, just did his third book. It's this big one here. And they've worked real well for him. Uh, he has used these as uh, lead magnets with like uh, meeting planners, things like that. Mm. Where, uh, well, actually, so... He'll do like a showcase where he meets with, say, 25 of them, and then he gives them this book. And if he thinks he's got them on the hook, or maybe they're wavering a little bit, he'll say, by the way, did I tell you everyone in your audience will get one of these books? <laughs> and usually that clinches the deal for him. Sure. So yeah, he nice. has two of these titles. Uh, and I'm not sure. I haven't talked to him exactly how he's been using this one, but he really kicked it up a notch. Uh, with a really nice cover. I mean, that looks like a regular bookstore book or an Amazon yeah, book. Yeah. 
It sure oh, does. It's, 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 he's a he's a real sharp guy. He used to be a TV producer and designer, and uh, we helped him with the inside. We did his interior lighting. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, I mean that's so, yeah. So I'm pretty sure he gives these away or he bundles them with his talk. You know, he probably raised his speaking fee, and this is part of his marketing. Yeah. So I should ask him about that. Uh, this is another guy that has been very successful with his books. Uh, he had these professionally designed. Oh, wow. Your data is showing. Yeah. <laughs> wow. that's, that's an intriguing title. Yeah. Yeah. You should have seen his cover. He had to redesign his cover. I mean, that's, uh, so is he like a technology or security expert or something? Yeah. No, he was... He was the guy, he got caught and said he had a bad partner, <clears throat> basically totally ripped him off years ago. And that's how he got into this business. <clears throat> uh, he has quite a story. It's, it's an amazing story. Yeah, I think this is a powerful tool. You know, yeah. online ad cost and, you know, it costs, you know, anywhere from to get a lead these days. I mean, you're looking at, you know, if you're really good at like Facebook ads or something, maybe you can get it for 50, 75 cents, but to get an actual opt-in, you're probably at two or three bucks. Um, and you know, they're all digital. And like, like you said, David, out of sight, out of mind to spend an extra dollar, maybe a dollar 50 to put something in their hands, mm -hmm. um, have a process. I mean, even with fulfillment, let's say you had to pay a VA or whatever, you know, to get these things out the door as people come into your online funnel, the separation factor that that's going to create between your business and somebody else's and the, and the, it's, it's, just, it's, it's unbelievable. Yeah. And the multi-channel approach, like all that stuff in, into effect, um, you know, that's, and it's something your competitors don't see, you know, there's a big, there's a big trend in marketing to funnel hack people, no names mentioned, but you know, <laughs> to funnel hack people. But like, if they don't actually go through the whole process and, and that kind of flies on anything, direct mail, those kind of things typically fly under the radar of your competition mm -hmm. or they're just not willing to do it, you know? Mm -hmm. And if you are, and you're willing and you, and you can see the ROI, it's, uh, it's just, it's so much better experience, I think, for most consumers. Sure. Absolutely. Um, well, and, and, and regardless of age. Is, right, right. Now, if the person, if your prospect is not ready at the time you market to them, it's really easy for them to keep these right. books. They just hang on to them. They don't lose. I've got, I've got calls. We've been marketing now since 2010. And literally, I'm still getting calls from 10 years ago. That yeah, I saw yeah. you and we did a trade show in Orlando, Florida, and I'm still getting calls from Orlando, Florida, 10 yeah. years later. Well, I can tell you that um, I used to have a handyman business and I would do flyers in people's mailboxes when I lived in Knoxville. And I can tell you that um, I did that for about two to three years while I was kind of trying to find my way in life. And I would get for, for a good, because I use my cell phone number on the flyers. For two to three years after I quit the business, I would still get calls on a flyer. It wasn't even a book. They right. held like on a flyer to it. because it yeah. would go in the junk drawer or the flyer yeah. drawer in their kitchen. And when they finally needed somebody, they would pull it out. Yep. And they would call. And I'd be like, Yeah, sorry, I'm not in the business anymore. But like if <laughs> for any other business though, where you're going to be around a while, um, you know, that builds up over time. If you're sending out a hundred of these a month or a thousand of these a month or whatever right. it is. It accretes. Yep. It accretes. And that's the one thing I tell people is don't do this unless you're committed long-term. Yeah. yeah. Cause that's what's exactly what's going to happen. Yeah. One other no idea you should know about uh, this guy, he's a marketing consultant. He was actually the first webmaster for FedEx, yes, Kevin Donnelly. Oh, cool. I like that. Marketing uh, and uh, what he did, this is the four to quarter by six size, but he, he wanted it to be available print on demand on Amazon, which will do a five by seven through create space. And so he used the same exact PDF file for this to uh, make, create a print on demand book 
with Amazon, and it, it, it's basically the same cover as well. It's a proportional uh, expansion, so we can provide those files if you oh, want okay. to post those on Amazon. That's interesting. So, so he's able to distribute on Amazon and use the mini book platform right. at the same right. time you, using the you, same you, template. Right. You can buy this book on Amazon. The printing's not as good. This this one is actually color. Sure. Uh, and the printing is much sharper. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you can get the five by seven version on Amazon. That's the only great. thing is at 60 or this is about 80 pages. Uh, they won't print on the spine. You right. know, we, we print on the spine. Yeah. Uh, they have to have at least like what I think it's like 96 pages to print or a hundred somewhere around there. To it's print 125. On. Oh, 100, you can okay. go through Ingram spark and Ingram spark supposedly will do a thinner spine, mm -hmm. but I don't, and they'll go down to 64 pages. But you know, so he, does, okay. he buys this for his usage and his distribution, but for the onesie twosies, he doesn't want to do with, you know, fulfillment. So he just sends people to Amazon sure. to buy. Well, the other thing is you can, you know, there's some like street cred if your book is on Amazon. That, right. Like you could, you could say, Hey, I sent you this, you know, mm -hmm. if you want extra copies, it's on Amazon. And it right. kind of creates this little priming sure. effect of like, Oh, this is a real a real right. book, you know, in quotes, yep. um, that, that they can see that cost actual money and you send mm -hmm. it to them for free. Right. Like there's all kinds of cool, you know, kind of uh, marketing that can go on there with that combination too. So, wow. Yeah, and we've, uh, and a lot, you know, there's a flip side to that. You can also say this book isn't available on Amazon. Yeah. Which yeah. is also a, a way of, you know, getting intrigue, uh, interest in your book. Like yep. you can't find this anywhere, you know, here I'm offering it and you can only, it's only available here. So, you know, I think and that's if another, if, if you don't want it on Amazon, don't put an ISBN number on the back because somebody mm. could get your book, post it and then create the first listing for Amazon. So if Good. you um, don't want it on Amazon, don't put an ISBN number on the right. back. Good to know. Good tip. That's very good. Wow. I feel like my brain's about to explode. <laughs> uh, I've got all kinds of ideas. Of that beer. <laughs> yeah. I am, uh, I'm empty. So, um, yeah. So David, like, yeah. So this is, this has been fun. We appreciate your time today. How can people, sure. people that want to get started, maybe publishing some of their content, what, what's the next step? Uh, where do they need to go? Is it manybook.com to, uh, to yeah. get started? So go to manybook.com, fill out the contact form. But pretty much, you know, read up on it, like uh, create your draft, uh, yeah. you know, give us a call and we can kind of scope things out and tell you, you know, what direction to go in because everybody's coming from a different place. It's kind of a custom business, uh, but I can also give you some links, some download links uh, where mm -hmm. people can download a few more things to have sure. for reference. Sure. That'd be great. Uh, website doesn't have everything on it in fact it, it doesn't have the pricing of the larger size which runs mm -hmm. 20 to 25 percent more mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, you know we, we send out quotes to people that uh, need those things need those quantities that, what's cool side. what's cool is when i you know when i use mini book is i love the fact that they've got a template a word template that's um for you know it's formatted so all i had to do was take the content that i have and and paste it into that you know the the template the format that was formatted for you know the smaller size and then from that point you know kind of work out the details you know from a cover design have my you know the guy that i hired to do the cover you know obviously i i gave him the dimensions and there were some back and forth we worked it out but it didn't take too long you know so it's uh uh it's a fairly easy process um you know, given the fact that, you know, there is a size standard that you have to meet, but you provide the dimensions, you provide the templates and everything right there at mini book. So, and that, yeah. I want to mention that's mini book that's spelled not B O O K, but B U K mini B U K.com. Right. That's right. Yep. Well, uh, David, this has been fun. Like I said, I've got lots of ideas. Um, you know, Jonathan, I think we should hook up David and Rich 
Oh yeah. Uh, Rich Sheffern. Rich Sheffern's always looking for new kind of creative ideas. Sure. Absolutely. Um, so we, we should introduce you, David, to one of our past guests, Rich Sheffern, who's, who's uh big into marketing and I think would love this idea. Like I, yeah. I really, do, I think he would. Um, but yeah, so, uh, David, we're going to do our outro, but, uh, hang on for just a second when we say goodbye. And so, uh, so we can, you know, say bye personally to you, but Jonathan, I'll let you wrap up and it's, it's been a fun episode. Like literally like I, my head's exploding with ideas. <laughs> I got to get to my whiteboard as quick as possible. Thank you, Jonathan and Sean. I appreciate it. Appreciate hey, thanks, idea. David. Have a great weekend. We enjoyed it, man. I'll be reaching out to you soon because I've got, like I said, I've got too many book projects in the works and, oh. um, and I'm looking forward to uh, using your company again, as always. And uh, we look forward to getting this episode out. Sounds good. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Very good. <laughs> All right. Yeah, Dave, I just want to say, uh, you can go ahead and kill the YouTube. All right. Yeah. Oh, I did want to mention too, um, <laughs>